there is so much that goes into a single day, let alone an entire lifetime. So when we have all of these things coming into and then leaving our lives, staying for a season and then disappearing again, be it people or places or opportunities or situations, it can be really tough, I've found, to find any consistent place to stand that is steady across all of these different events. But that idea of change being the only constant, I've found, at least for me, to be really helpful in providing me that foundation to rely on and fall back on when things in my environment can seem very turbulent and up in the air. And the reason why I think that's been working is because it stems back to a deeper issue or a deeper idea of generally being able to let go of control or let go of the need to hold on to specific things in their specific configurations that we might find them in when we first encounter them. That more general idea of simply letting go because it can be so easy and I've done this an innumerable amount of times at this point where something good comes into my life be it fulfilling some kind of validation or approval or comfort or pleasure and that stereotypical story of the monkey comes up. You know the one where researchers have a monkey and they put a bunch of salt in the bottom of a hole that has a narrow top. So the only way the monkey can get its hand into the hole is by putting its fingers together so it can make the distance. But then, once the monkey grabs hold of what it wants, the salt in this case, it can't, it can't pull its hand out. But the monkey will stay there almost indefinitely holding on to its prize, holding on to the thing that it really wants to get. But it will never actually be able to get it because it has to let go of it to be able to move on and get back to actually living. I know it's a bit of a stupid example, but I hope the point came across. And it's one of those things that is strange to really grapple with because it's kind of a paradox in that the thing that we're wanting to have more than anything else in that moment is actually going to prevent us from experiencing the underlying peace that we feel we're going to have as a result of attaining this idea, this fixation of desire in that moment. So the thing that ultimately causes us more unhappiness is the process of trying to cling to the things that we think will make us feel better in that moment at that time. So even though it's important to have a certain level of stability and reliability and predictability in our day-to-day -day lives, if we're not managing our expectations well enough, then it can really do us in. For me, this last year, and especially this last six months, has been quite a turbulent time for me, and a lot has changed. But I don't think I'm alone in this thought process, because I think that there will be a lot of people out there that will be going through a similar kind of thing and, and feeling a similar kind of way, whether it's through redundancies or other kinds of opportunities presenting themselves now. In my mind, it's mostly just about realizing that there's change happening all of the time, but it's just whether or not we're experiencing our slice of change at that present moment. And the reason that I phrase it that way is to highlight the reality that there is change going on around us all of the time. And if we are to dip our toes into making a decision amongst any of it, then there is the potential for a single choice to change the course of our entire lives. And 99% of the time, we don't know what ultimately is going to cause that change. But we just have to lean into whatever it is we think is best for us at that time with the current mindset and tools we have available to then hopefully see what ends up being that big, incredible, life-giving, nourishing change. But the most important point here is that we can't avoid it. A family member's gonna die, someone's gonna break up with us, we're gonna be let go of from our work, a family member's gonna get sick, we're gonna get sick, someone else we love is gonna get sick, and there's nothing that we're gonna be able to do about it. So again, we can see how not helpful this is to be clinging to this prior idea of be it ourselves, someone else, or of a situation. And we could nerd out and talk about how our bodies are replacing billions of cells every single day, and how once all of those cells are replaced, does it become 
a Ship of Theseus situation? Let me know in the comments if you get that reference. But otherwise, we are constantly in a state of flux. There is new processes, new things going on all of the time, not only in our external world, but inside of us as well. So the only thing giving us a consistent idea of who we are is the piecing together that our brain does each and every second that we find ourselves to be aware of ourselves. Outside of that, the set of atoms that we deem to be ourselves is almost constantly changing. So do with that what you will. The moral of the story is when we inevitably encounter some kind of change in our lives, whether it's enacted by us or imposed by someone else upon us, that we can stress a little less in the knowledge that change was inevitable and that there is no other way that it could have been than what we have got in front of us right now in this moment. And if you're wanting to go hard mode and really lean into this process, then feel free to indulge in that amor fati of loving the fate that we find ourselves with. And to truly love it, not just accept or begrudgingly move through or even superficially appreciate, but to deeply and intensely and honestly feel grateful for the opportunity to be experiencing whatever we have on our plate at any moment. I know this is a tough one, that's why it's hard mode. I don't get there all of the time and it's a pretty fickle state to find myself in. But once we can practice it more and more and make it more of a routine and a habit, then we can experience it on a more consistent basis. Well, I think we'll leave it there. So, once again, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and I'll see you next time.